Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Bobby Hesley coming to you live from Thailand. I want to get right into the issue of reparations. I'm going to give you some real black history. That's one thing you're going to find on my channel. You're not going to find the watered down, filled with omissions type of black history that's most likely taught in most inner cities, most public schools. Um, February is a very hard month for me because I've studied real black history and liberal historians have worked very, very hard to erase crucial parts of our black history to kind of, I hate to use it, but to kind of whitewash black history. The version of black history that most people are taught is a whitewashed, revisionist, watered down version of black history. And I'm gonna try to change that. I'm gonna try to use the influence, the growing influence of my channel to change that, to awaken minds, to unplug minds from the matrix that's been you know, pulled over their eyes. So let me get into reparations. Now, in a few videos ago, I talked about how the first to own slaves were blacks. And this is why historians have worked so hard to water down black history when it comes to this topic. Because, and I, and I gotta give a shout out to David L. Gray. I want you guys to check out David L. Gray. He's an incredible Catholic theologian. He's a black Catholic theologian. He's a published author. I consider him a good friend of mine. He's one of the funnier guys on the internet that you'll find. He's a brilliant guy, but he's also extremely funny. So check out David L. Gray. Shout out to you, Dave. We gotta do some collabs soon, my man. It's been a long time coming. But um, Dave actually made a good point when he posted my video that I made about reparations a few days ago. He actually made a good point. He, he, he took it a little bit further than I did. Um, I did some research on it, but he pointed out something that was very crucial that I have to give him credit for, credit where it's due, where he said that because of Anthony Johnson, Anthony Johnson is the father of American black slavery. He really is. And I'm gonna go into detail why that is. If it were not for Anthony Johnson, we would not have had the institution of slavery. Anthony Johnson actually played a huge role in institutionalized slavery here in the United States. So here's how, let me give you a little bit of background. So the New World was the developing West. You know, it was started by Christopher Columbus when he discovered it. Everybody wanted to come to the New World, everybody. And there were people from other parts of the world that were in countries that they didn't want to be in. They wanted to be in this exciting, new, innovative New World. So how can they get from Europe? How could they get from Africa? How could they get from other continents around the world to this New World? What was their meal ticket out of their country? Well. There was this thing created called the indentured servitude contract where people who lived in the new world basically said, listen, if you want to come here to the new world, I'm willing to bring you over, but I got to get something out of the deal. What's in it for me to pluck you out of your country of origin, to come over to the new world. And I basically be your meal ticket to a, a greater, better life. Well, during the time of the colonies, you had lots of people that owned farms, that owned different industries. So what they would do is they created these contracts called indentured servitude contracts, where in exchange for coming over, in exchange for being brought over, people would want to get on these ships and they didn't have any money though. They were poor. They were oppressed. They wanted to escape their country. So what they would do is they say, okay, transport us on this ship. And when we get to this new world, we will work as indentured servants. We will sign a contract, we'll work as indentured servants. Now, like every good thing, it's abused. There were people who actually captured people and brought them here against their will. And that was actually the case with Mr. Anthony Johnson. He was from Angola and he was unjustly captured and brought to the United States against his will. So that part of black history is true. There were blacks, you know, that were brought here against their will, okay? Anthony Johnson was one of them. He was one of 20 blacks that lived in the state of Virginia. That was, well, it wasn't a state yet because that was during the time of the colonies. So an indentured servitude contract is a saleable asset where whoever was under contract was bound to work for their master for a predetermined period of time. Once that period of time expired, they would be free. And in exchange for their years of service, they would get some compensation and they were set up to go on their way to build their own farm. They would take all the skills that they learned and they could build their own farm. They could build their own industry if they wanted. They were given tools and they were even given 50 acres of land per indentured servant that they were able to acquire for themselves. So Anthony, Anthony Johnson was one such indentured servant.
okay? Once his contract expired with his master, he became a free man. And he worked for 14 years on a tobacco farm. He learned a lot of skills. He learned the tobacco business, the tobacco trade inside and out. He was a very skilled man. So what he did is he monetized that skill that he acquired over a period of 14 years. Once he became free, he wanted to have indentured servants of his own. So he actually went out and got a, an indentured servant by the name of John Cassor. Okay, John Cassor. Here's his picture. I want you to see what he looks like. And John Cassor is the first black American slave in history. And again, you're not going to hear this taught in public schools now. This is the whitewashed black history that has hidden this from you, that you had to come to some guy on the Internet's YouTube channel to find out, in spite of all the money you pay to go to school, whether it's college tuition or whether it's tax money that pays to build these public schools that should be teaching our kids these things, but they're not. They're hiding them from them, much like the feminists like to hide their history, which I'll do lots of videos on that too. But the fact is, John Cassor was the very first American black slave. And you know why? You know why I'm calling him a black slave? Because here's what ended up happening. Once his indentured servitude contract expired, he was legally free to live his life in the new world. He was legally free to build his own farm, to build whatever kind of uh, trade that he wanted to build. But once Mr. Anthony Johnson got a taste of what it's like to have an indentured servant work for you, he didn't want to give up that power. So you know what he did? He actually sued to keep Mr. Cassar as a slave. There was actually somebody else who Mr. Cassar worked for once his contract was expired, once his legal obligation to Mr. Anthony Johnson had ended, he was actually picked up by another master um, who didn't sign a contract. He just said, hey, you learned all these skills working for Anthony Johnson. Why don't you come work for me? I'll pay you and we can work together. And maybe one day you can build your own farm just like your master went on to build his after his years of service. So what ended up happening is Mr. Johnson got a taste of that indentured servitude working for him and profiting off of it that he sued to keep John Castor as his slave. He went to court and he won a court case. He actually got the court to side with him to take him out of the, the employ of the man who had picked him up. And rather than the contract being owned, rather than, rather than the indentured servant contract being owned, now Mr. John Casser was property. The contract wasn't property, the person was property. And John Casser was the very first black, the very first slave in America to be considered shadow and he was sued by a greedy, evil black man. Yeah, I said it. By a greedy, evil black man to become a slave. And I'm actually gonna read to you the court pronouncement. And here's what it says. This day, Anthony Johnson, Negro, made his complaint to the court against Mr. Robert Parker and declared that he detaineth his servant, John Cassor, Negro, under the pretense that said Negro was a free man. Did you get that, folks? So the court even acknowledged that John Casser was a free man. He was no longer legally bound to his indentured servitude contract under Anthony Johnson. It continues, the court seriously considering and maturely weighing the premises, doth ye find that the said Mr. Robert Parker most unjustly keepeth the said Negro from Anthony Johnson, his master. It is therefore the judgment of the court and ordered that the said John Casser Negro forthwith return unto the service of the said master Anthony Johnson and that Mr. Robert Parker make payment of all charges to the suit. Did you get that folks? So the court acknowledged that John Casser was a free man and yet it sided with Anthony Johnson, a cruel tyrant who wanted to force this free black man to continue to work for him against his will without pay. So the very first cruel slave master in American slavery history to own a slave was a black man named Anthony Johnson. Now it didn't end well for Anthony Johnson. It says in the Bible that when you sow the wind that you reap the whirlwind, okay? Choices have consequences. What ended up happening is Mr. Anthony Johnson didn't realize how racist America was at the time. I don't deny that. And the fact is, when Anthony Johnson died, he went on to build a huge, very successful 
very profitable tobacco farm in Northampton, Virginia, off of slaves, okay? He had four white slaves. He had one black slave. He even went on to, uh, one of his sons was an indentured servant. A lot of people don't know that. So he actually had more than one black slave. But it turns out that after Anthony Johnson died, the racist courts, the same racist court that put a black man under the forced slavery of another black man, John Castor, under Anthony Johnson, they actually took his property, they took his empire, they took his estate, and they gave it away to white people. That's how it ended for Anthony Johnson. He was not able to pass on his massive tobacco fortune, his massive tobacco farm, onto his children. But you know what, though? As wrong as that is, I mean, that was, that was done out of racism, but I'm gonna say some hard truths, okay? I have zero compassion for the way things ended for Anthony Johnson. I am not gonna cry crocodile tears over Anthony Johnson having his fortune given away to whites. You know why? Because that was a fortune that was built on blood money. Slave money is blood money. He built that fortune off the back of a black man who he forced to stay a slave. So I have zero compassion. And I've been dialoguing with black people over these last few days. I've been getting lots of private messages. I've been having people post on my Facebook wall. I've been having people message me. And, you know, some good, some bad, some positive, some negative. You can't please everybody. And I got to say, the majority of the black people that I, have talking, that I have talked to about this, the biggest problem that they have with this whole story is how Anthony Johnson's wealth was appropriated and given away to white people. But they seem to miss the fact that that was wealth that was unjustly built off of the back of a free man that the court acknowledged was free and then made him a slave. So this sla American slavery, it was at this point forward, this is what set the legal precedent. It was at this point forward with this court case that Anthony Johnson won over Mr. Castor and over the man who, you know, Robert Parker, the man who was willing to pay him that's what institutionalized slavery, guys. This is why you're not taught real black history because it doesn't fit the liberal narrative that slavery has permanently affected black people and that 200 years later, we're still disabled and crippled and disenfranchised and not able to prosper like all the other minorities. If you truly wanna know black history and you wanna have intellectual honesty, you need to know the real facts of black history. And you're gonna to have to come to my channel to find it because you ain't gonna find it in academia. You're not gonna find it in public schools. You're not gonna find it in the mainstream. Your man, Bobby Hesley, will give it to you though. Slavery in the United States of America was institutionalized by a greedy, evil tyrant who was black named Anthony Johnson. There's your black history. You ain't gonna hear that next February, but it's a fact. So this, this completely defeats this narrative of reparations. This is why I'm making this video, because that's what people are talking about. You got the former CEO of BET, Robert Johnson, I think his name is, talking about how we're owed $14 trillion in reparations. Well, you know what? What institutionalized slavery? What set the legal climate for that slavery to happen? Anthony Johnson. And Anthony Johnson, by the way, was not the only black person to own slave. Did you know that after this court case, after Johnson won this court case, there were other blacks that ended up owning other slaves. He actually made it easier for other black people to own their own black slaves. They looked at what Anthony Johnson had when he was able to pluck John Casser away from Robert Parker. You, it, it empowered other black colonists that had been here to say, you know what? I want my own black slaves. If Anthony Johnson can do it, and if he was protected and empowered by the courts to do it, I want my own black slaves. Much like abortion. Once abortion was legalized in 1973, when Roe vs. Wade passed, women started coming out of the woodwork. Oh man, I want to. I want to get abortions. I want to have sex without consequence. I want my abortions too. Same thing happened with slavery, folks. And there's lots of parallels between slavery and abortion. Because what made both of those travesties legal is that they denied the humanity. The legal system stripped the humanity away from the victims. Blacks were only considered three-fifths human. So because blacks were not quite human, they were able to be sold and traded and rented as chattel, as property. The same thing happened with the unborn. Because the unborn were not considered human, they were able to be aborted in the womb. There's lots of parallels between slavery and abortion. And guess who were the main victims of both? Black people.
So there's your black history, guys. You want to cry your crocodile tears about black American slavery? You want to go out and march and protest and demand reparations? Well, you better do it honestly. Because this, this black slavery that I hear so many blacks continue to whine and complain about 200 years later was instituted and created by our people. By our people. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Keep a lookout for my next videos. I'm going to actually start a series called the Real Black History Series, which you're going to find on my channel. I got some exclusive content I'm going to produce for you. I'm a crusader for truth and for justice. And I'm willing to say the things that other people aren't willing to say. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next video.